In Dragon Ball Super Broly, Broly is found fairly late into the story by Frieza. But what if he was found earlier? What if the Kaioshin, in preparation for Majin Buu, decided to scour the universe and found Broly? Today, we're going to explore just that. What if Broly was found by Kaioshin and trained in the realm of the Kais? In Dragon Ball Super Chapter 30, Kaioshin explains that he hasn't really observed planets for combat strength. So this is where our main change comes in. Because as they observe Bobbity, they realize that he is making his move towards Earth. And Kibito tells Shin that it would be a good idea to find a champion to fight against Boo. This actually isn't unprecedented, as future Shin took on Trunks as a trainee in preparation for Bobbity's arrival in the Dragon Ball Super manga, as seen in Chapter 16. Thus, Shin looks through many planets. Earth would be an obvious choice, but he fears that making a move there will alert Bobbity and trigger him to act sooner. So he keeps on looking and he will probably find various people. Frieza soldiers, maybe even Granola, but none of them are really strong enough to face against Boo. He nearly gives up, especially since there's only 28 inhabited planets. But it's exactly because there's such little planets with intelligent life that he's able to find Broly. So a 29th one, even if it has just two Saiyans, with one having an incredible key presence, that's going to alert him. So he decides that this may be the way to go. He teleports to Vampa alongside Kibito. There, they quickly locate Broly and Paragus, not giving too much information on who they are. Paragus is determined to escape planet Vampa. He says he will do whatever they need to in order to get him out. But Shin isn't looking for Paragus. Instead, he's looking for Broly's help. Despite his calm demeanor, Shin can sense the latent power within Broly. He asks for a quick demonstration of power. His father urges him to cooperate. Shin is impressed by Broly, but it's clear that he likes finesse and training. But as the battle continues, Broly gets increasingly more and more aggressive, learning just exactly how Shin moves. The Supreme Kai is forced to restrain Broly, just as he does against Super Saiyan Gohan and Dabora, showing that he can indeed do it to people stronger than himself. He tells him to calm down, but Broly's power rises more and more. So Broly breaks free from the restraints, and Paragus shocks him just in time. Shin realizes that Broly is hiding more power than he thought, though he thinks the use of the shock collar is barbaric. Either way, Shin needs help, so he offers them both a new home. As long as Broly agrees to help against the wizard named Bobbity, explaining just how grave the danger is. Shin also mentions that the planet they need to save has other Saiyans, so maybe that could be a good place for them to stay after all is said and done. This intrigues Paragus, as Shin also tells him that planet Vegeta is sadly been destroyed. Either way, Paragus is going to take what he can get as long as he's out of Vampa. Broly and Paragus both agree, and they are teleported to the realm of the Kais. We actually aren't sure how much longer before Bobbity's attack, Shin trained Trunks in the future, but seeing how he decided to make his move relatively late in the main timeline, and how much stronger Gohan improved with the Sea Sword, I think placing their training just a few weeks before the tournament and the attack from Bobbity is a safe bet. Broly is easily able to pull out the Sea Sword. In the manga, it is said that Shin initiated Trunks as a Kai apprentice prior to the training. Broly would likely be given the same ritual. This is not the same ritual as the ultimate one, but it does give Broly the ability to heal. Eventually, later on, he learns the Kai Kai with Kibito, being a little upset at how easily he's able to master it. Broly gets stronger through the Sea Sword and meditation training in order to keep his rage in check, but it's very difficult. Neither Shin nor Kibito are exactly masters, so it's not like his training with Whis in the actual story. His progress is more much slower. I will also mention that, though this Broly is obviously above everyone in the Boo arc, there is no one to really challenge him. In the movie, he improved so much and got so strong so quickly because Goku and Vegeta kept pushing him to his limits. So without that, he isn't going to reach the same levels we saw in the movie. Eventually, through their training there, Paragus also reveals just how he ended up on Vampa. Just like with Future Trunks in the manga, Shin's final test for Broly is using Kaching against the Sea Sword. This, of course, releases the old Kai. And and I will say that the old Kai will probably want to reward Broly and unlock his potential. However, this is so close to the day of the tournament that they just don't have time. The ritual takes 20 hours and 5 more hours for the potential to actually be unleashed. Broly doesn't think he'll need it anyways. The day of the tournament arrives, and Shin tells Broly the plan of getting his power taken and then following Yamu to the ship. Broly and Shin arrive on Earth as fighters, while Kibito and Paragus are just spectators. They run into Goku, Vegeta, and the others. They both recognize them as Saiyans, but Shin's presence sends a chill down their spine before they ask any real questions. Vegeta notices that Paragus and Broly are staring 
bring him down though, but his priority is fighting Kakarot. Later on, during the junior division, Broly asks Paragus what he should do about Vegeta. Paragus says that they can deal with him later, but first they need to go along with Shin's plan, at least at first. In the Dragon Ball Super Broly movie, both Broly and Paragus have an extremely angry reaction to Vegeta, but they still followed orders from Frieza and only attacked when allowed to by the Emperor. As the tournament commences, Shin uses magic to ensure that he goes against Broly. And so it begins. Spopovich vs Videl goes on as normal. Broly is surprised by Gohan's Super Saiyan when he is angered by Spopovich and disgusted at how brutal Babidi's men were. Before Gohan runs off with her to the hospital, Broly stops him. Shin warns Broly telepathically not to blow their cover as he heals Videl using his Kai powers. Gohan thanks him profusely as Broly just nods and walks away. Shin vs Broly is the next match and just as he was told, Broly explodes his aura first things first. This prompts Yamu and Spopovich to jump Broly and steal his Kili. Even though Broly knew the dangers of the plan, his anger was still getting the better of him. Shin uses his restraints, but this time it's getting too much, as his power explodes more. Shin is pushed back, and Broly has a chance to blast the Spopovich, killing him, while Yamu tries to fly away. Goku, Gohan, and Vegeta jump in to stop Broly. That's when Paragus, upon seeing Vegeta, can't contain his anger, and tells Broly to attack. This is his chance. Broly is pushing the Z Fighters away. Before Broly can properly attack Vegeta, however, Kibito snatches the remote and activates it, forcing Broly down. Everyone is confused at what's going on, and the tournament is evacuated. Gohan and Goku help Broly up, while Vegeta is angrily trying to figure out how someone who isn't even a Super Saiyan can be so strong. Kibito grabs onto Paragus and descends down with Shin, but before he begins to speak, Vegeta is already pointing his keyboard at his face. He needs answers, but of course Broly isn't just going to let someone threaten his father like this as he gets in front of Vegeta. Shin tells everyone to calm down as he tries to explain. Shin and Kibito go over everything, including the fact that Broly is a Saiyan who was cast away by Vegeta's father. Shin should have probably foreseen this happening, but as we know, he isn't exactly the best at his job. Paragus continues to swear revenge with Broly worried about his father. Vegeta and Goku are interested in the Saiyan, as maybe now they have someone to surpass. Paragus realizes that making the move right now perhaps wasn't the best choice, but he was in the heat of the moment. Still, he wants to take revenge, and he thinks Broly does too. In reality, he's just really listening to what his father wants. Vegeta continues to exclaim how he cares about fighting Kakarot, not this boo guy. Vegeta and Broly are already at odds with each other, so hearing him like this brings Broly to tell Vegeta to stay and fight Goku then. He doesn't need his help. Shin knows how strong Broly is, and though he could use more forces, he agrees. Vegeta could be more of a liability. Gohan, Piccolo, Kibito, Broly, Paragus, and Shin go along towards Babidi's ship, following Yamu close behind. Through their travels, Gohan gets to know Broly a little more, as he thanks him for healing Videl. He even asks about the fur he's wearing. Through the conversation, Broly and Gohan are able to relate to each other. Gohan's had friends before like that too. Neither of them are exactly the greatest fans of fighting, even if their Saiyan blood urges them to. Once they arrive to Babidi's spaceship, Yamu has already been killed by Babidi, and he's about to enter the ship when Dabara jumps at Kibito. In an instant, Broly appears before him and kills him with a single mouth blast, as Gohan tries to take the chance to blast down at Bobbity, but he creates a barrier and enters the ship. They go in together and Broly deals very easily against Pui Pui and Yakon. It is on the third, empty level where Bobbity begins to take interest. Therefore, he tries to delve into the mind of Broly. Broly reels in pain as Bobbity targets his most uncontrollable power, but he isn't exactly evil. So through Gohan and Shin's words, Broly is able to push through the darkness slowly. Paragus thinks that the only way to stop this is by shocking him, but Gohan tells him to wait and talk him down. Gohan understands what it's like to have to fight for a greater cause, to have the weight of power and emotions, telling him that once this is over, they can't help each other. In Dragon Ball Super Broly, simply talking to Broly didn't work, but that Broly wanted to keep fighting Goku. Even so, from the look on everyone's eyes, it does seem like it could possibly work. This Broly is actively trying to keep himself under control, so with the support of Gohan and the training from the Kaioshin, he's able to break through. This strikes Paragus. He had never been able to calm Broly down with just words, only shocking him. This wasn't surprising to Gohan. If Paragus was anything like Vegeta and the Saiyans of old, then surely he was a ruthless father. Shin and Kibito are impressed. It seems like Broly is making progress, but Piccolo reminds everyone that they don't really have time. Babidi is terrified and even tries to take over Vegeta, but since he's already in the middle of an intense battle against Goku, he doesn't need to rely on Babidi. As far as Vegeta knows, this is an even match, so he rejects the influence altogether. Just as 
they are about to head down, Paragus begins to compulse. Broly runs to his father as an M forms on his forehead, but Shin tells Broly that they need to stop Bobbity now. That's the only way they can stop him from taking over Paragus. After all, he has a weaker mind. He'll be a lot easier to control. But Broly and Gohan burst down into the lower levels. It's too late for Bobbity, as the two of them fire a key blast that finally kills the wizard. The threat of Boo was stopped just in time, as the Keely Valve showed that the power collected from Broly had been just a little over 90%. They were way too close to reviving Boo. Paragus falls to his knees, his mind intact. He hates to admit it, but Gohan did save him. Shin realizes then just how dangerous Broly's power could be if unchecked but at least for now, they could rest. Shin and Kibito were going to take the egg off to a different world to dispose of it. But as they mention returning to the Kaioshin realm, Paragus bursts out that he's done his part. Now he can do what he wants. Telling Broly to go after Vegeta, Paragus follows behind, with Shin prompting Gohan to stop them. Goku and Vegeta find themselves in the middle of the most devastating battle yet. Goten and Trunks have left the tournament grounds amidst the commotion and were watching the battle from afar. It's clear that they're near equals, at least as far as Vegeta knows. The prince didn't want any interruptions, so when Paragus and Broly arrive to attack them both, he's very angry. Goku tries to talk down Broly, but Paragus's taste for revenge is too much, and Broly wants to appease his father. This is the first time Vegeta and Goku have been really forced to fight alongside each other, though they don't stand a chance against this monster. Goten and Trunks try to help out, but Vegeta tells them to get somewhere safe. This surprises Paragus. He had no idea the prince had a kid, let alone one with an earthling, and he was actually trying to protect him. This reminded him of Broly and himself, more so than the king and the prince. Gohan soon arrives with Kibito and Shin. Kibito wants to use a remote, but Gohan tells him to give him a chance first, while telling Paragus that they had nothing to do with their exile, and that the Saiyans, even Vegeta, had changed for the better. Goku doesn't want to cut his time on Earth short, nor does he want to reveal this to Vegeta just yet, but seeing how Broly is a legitimate threat, he tells Vegeta and Gohan to distract him as he powers up into Super Saiyan 3. Vegeta is in shock when he sees this, and everyone else is surprised that this power could actually actually slowly match up to Broly. Vegeta is insulted that Goku had been hiding this power, and that there was another Saiyan who seemed even stronger. Even so, part of him actually enjoyed this. Kekron wasn't some nebulous being whom he didn't know how strong he was getting in the other world. Now Vegeta had a clear mission. Despite this, ignoring Gohan's warning, Vegeta uses all of his strength to fire one final flash at both of the warriors. With the blast consuming Goku and Broly, to Vegeta's horror, the final flash did little to stop them both. But as much as Goku would love to keep fighting, he is just eating through his time on Earth. Shin tries to tell Paragus to call off Broly, but Paragus insists that they have completed their part. They don't need to listen to him anymore. Gohan is upset at Paragus for treating Broly like this, recalling back to when his father ignored his own wishes during the Cell games, as he tells Shin to try and restrain Broly. The restraints only last for a few seconds, but that's enough for Gohan and Goku to talk to Broly. Thanks to Gohan being there, someone who's actually made an effort to befriend Broly, the Saiyan is actually more willing to listen. Paragus isn't sure as his ethics begin to waver. Seeing Vegeta, a man whose father he hated for so long, have his own son made him realize that perhaps he was doing something stupid here. Not only that, but Gohan had extended his hand out to Broly. This wasn't going as expected, and if this continues, the planet could be in danger, especially since Broly's Saiyan instincts are really kicking in into full gear while staring at Super Saiyan 3 Goku. That's when, from the Kaioshin realm, the old Kai screams at them all to finally do something, otherwise the planet is going to get destroyed. That finally snapped Paragus. Between seeing Vegeta change, Gohan befriending Broly, the danger of the planet destruction, and the offer from them for a new home, he finally admits that it's time to do something. The old Kai couldn't believe he nearly awoke his potential. That would have been dangerous. Paragus snatches the remote from Kibito, and right before Paragus pressed the button, Goku landed a blast right in front of him, stopping him. Goku said that it was clear that Broly wanted to keep fighting. As Vegeta, Goku and Gohan kept challenging him. Shin argued that they had to stop this before the planet exploded, but the Saiyans just weren't stopping. Thus, without much of a choice, Kibito and Shin teleport all of them to the Kaioshin realm, where at least the planet will be able to withstand the force. After all, this is a Goku who still wants the next generation to take over. He tells Gohan that if he's serious about wanting to help Broly, he's gonna have to keep up with him, and this was his time to prove it. Vegeta, Goku, Gohan, and Broly all really enjoyed the battle, even if Broly was losing control. The old Kai, however, was not happy about this. Paragus was amazed 
lost at all of this. Broly was learning as he fought, but so were the other Saiyans. Them teaming up together was his first real challenge, but it was clear that his power was overwhelming. Eventually, the old Kai, Shin, and Kibito did force Paragus to press the button. This was the first time he actually felt bad about doing it. For one, it's obvious that there is other ways to stop Broly. Above that, it seemed like, in a way, he was enjoying himself. But if he was losing control, then he was just a danger. The old Kai reprimanded everyone involved. He thought that maybe he should force Paragus and Broly out of there. And so, Vegeta agreed to find them a home. The old Kai also told Gohan that he would be responsible in helping Broly try and understand his power, whether he'd like to or not. But of course, the elder Kai ended up shooting himself in the foot, since the only place he could really do that in is the Kaioshin realm. Either way, the battle ended, and they were all satisfied. Even Broly, who now more than ever had an incentive to try and control his power. Because, as we saw in Dragon Ball Super Superhero, Broly is mesmerized by fighting, and he does enjoy it, but he can't enjoy it to his fullest if he doesn't control his power. Either way, Broly ended up spending so much time in the Kaioshin realm that Vegeta ended up giving him a capsule home to live at. Thus, though Goku and Vegeta's fight was interrupted, Vegeta is more or less satisfied with the rematch, but the gap between himself and Kakarot is nothing compared to Broly, with both Saiyans striving to reach him. Goku gets to spend the rest of the hours with his family and friends, and even Broly and Paragus during the feast. When it's time for Goku to return, Broly and the others leave to the Kaioshin realm as well. However, once Goku is back in the other world, World, just like with Gohan in the Buark, he realizes that he can sense Broly in the Kaioshin realm, and though he still lives with King Kai, he often trains alongside Broly. Gohan, likewise, visits the Kai's realm, having a surprise reunion with his father. Even Vegeta gets to travel there and train with Goku, of course. The training with Broly will of course make them all much stronger than the start of Battle of Gods, though I don't see them reaching Broly anytime soon. Over the years, Broly makes progress controlling himself, though he's still afraid of losing control and remains mostly in base. He himself is worried about the Berserk power. Gohan has been continuously helping Broly train, and with the old Kai being scared about being put back into the sea sort, he'd rather have someone that can defend him. He admired the way he dealt with Broly, so he opts to have Gohan's potential unlocked, so he can continue helping Broly train. He also reiterates that he's not going to unlock Broly's potential, not until he's able to control himself. The amount of power Broly could potentially have could be even more dangerous than what he's at. Anyways, in the Dragon Ball Super anime, after just a year Year of training with Piccolo, Gohan went from his much weaker Resurrection F self to keeping up with Super Saiyan Blue Goku. So training here with Broly will make him much stronger, though his training with Broly isn't as much as Goku's. Either way, all three of the Saiyans are stronger. So three years pass on by, and Lord Beerus wakes up to look for the Super Saiyan God. Whis knows that there's Saiyans in the world of the Kais, so that's where he visits first and foremost. Shin makes sure to tell both Broly and Goku not to do anything stupid, and though Broly listens, sense, Goku tries to fight Beerus anyways. Beerus is surprised to see that the old Kai is out of the sea sort. After all, he was the one that locked him away in there. He contemplates locking him back into a new one, but Goku speeds his way. Beerus is much more impressed by this Super Saiyan 3 than the one in Battle of Gods, but it's clearly not what he's looking for. Goku, upset that he can't really match up to Beerus, prompts Broly to try. Beerus is getting a little annoyed, so he tries to just knock Broly out. But to his surprise, Broly actually evades the attack and continues the fight. Broly tries to keep peace through this, but as Beerus continues to be more aggressive, Broly's movements begin to evolve to try and match Beerus. The god can't believe what he's seeing. Perhaps this could be the Super Saiyan God, but he doubts it. He doesn't have God Key, nor the red aura he saw in his dreams. Either way, he wants to keep an eye on Broly. Broly begins to lose control for the first time in quite a while, striking Beerus across the face as he reaches his Ikari form. There is a small back and forth as Beerus tests Broly out before Broly can get even more out of control, Beerus knocks him out. Just like in Superhero, Beerus thinks that Broly is a bit of a maniac. He goes off to planet Earth to see if the prince knows anything else. On Earth, well, the party is actually relatively peaceful. Without Boo, Beerus remains calm and has fun at the party. In the Kaioshin realm, everyone gathers around the old Kai's crystal ball to check out the gatherings. And even though everything is going okay, Beerus will eventually ask Vegeta about the Super Saiyan God. With the help of the Kai telepathy, Goku is able to suggest using the Dragon Balls to ask about the god. When it's revealed they need five Saiyans to complete the ritual, Beerus begins to get annoyed and demands the Saiyans from the Kaioshin planet to be brought down to Earth. Despite Shen bringing down Broly and Paragus, the ritual doesn't work. After all, Shenron describes the need of six pure-hearted Saiyans, and I think Paragus is far from that, and would be apprehensive about giving Vegeta 
Vegeta power anyways, even if he's more okay with him than before. Videl is about to reveal the surprise that she's pregnant, when Beerus speaks up. What about the others saying Kaioshin? Why not bring him down? But Lord Beerus, Goku's dead. Lousy excuse, it doesn't need to stop us, right Whis? I was never one for the Beerus impression. Anyways, watching from the Kaioshin realm and fearing of what Beerus's anger could do, the old Kai grabs Goku and tells him that he will give him his life for the sake of the ritual. Goku is confused by this, but by the time he asks what he means, the old Kai flops to the floor dead, before waking up again. And now, Goku is alive. Quickly, Kibito teleports him down to Earth. Thus, Goku had a tearful and surprise reunion with his friends and family. But there was no time, as the power of the Super Saiyan God was given to Vegeta, since he was the obvious choice to be the head before they had to get Goku, Broly and the others. He hated having to rely on everyone as the battle begins. To Vegeta and Goku, the power Beerus showed was more of a challenge to overcome, but Broly, it was something else. This was the first time anyone had been stronger than himself, but in control of that power. It was clear now more than ever that in order to move forward and live the life he wanted, he needed to be fully in control control. Currently, he could control himself in the sense that he could just stop himself from exploding, but he wanted more than that. He wanted to control the Ikari form and not be afraid of it anymore. Either way, the battle between Vegeta and Beerus is somewhat similar to the one we see between Goku and Beerus, though this Vegeta ends up being stronger than the Super Saiyan God Goku had, thanks to the years of training with Broly. This gives Beerus more of a challenge. This experience leads Vegeta to still wanting to train at Beerus' planet with Whis, but this time he brings up the idea to Goku. With Vegeta being so much stronger now, he doesn't have anyone to fight against except for Broly, who is much more timid than Goku, so he wants to push his rival up to that level. Goku and Vegeta start training at Beerus' planet, while Broly trains a bit more with Gohan, though the hybrid Saiyan has been so busy lately with work and Pan, so much so that Broly's kinda left in a limbo as far as progress goes, and Gohan becomes sloppier with his fighting, though not nearly to the same degree as Resurrection F. Without Goku around, Broly has a lot of pent up thirst for fighting. Eventually, this reaches a boiling point, and Broly approaches Shin about training there too. And though Shin isn't sure about bothering Beerus, Whis had noticed just how peculiar this Saiyan was when they first met, so it actually doesn't take long for Whis himself to ask Broly about joining. Whis had been okay with waiting for Goku and Vegeta, but Broly just wasn't nearly as proactive. Broly feels bad about leaving his father, Shin, and Kibito. Paragus encourages him to get stronger so that one day he can really beat up Vegeta, though this is more tongue-in-cheek. Shin has become his best friend alongside Gohan, and tells him that he does believe this is the best thing for him. Whis is an actual master of martial arts, and the two Saiyans are the only ones strong enough to really help him gain control. Still, the Kaioshin realm welcomes him anytime. So, Broly joins in Goku and Vegeta at Beerus' planet. But Whis knows that Broly wants control above all else, so that's exactly what his training will revolve around. The training begins slowly for Broly, as Shin tries to remind him that he doesn't need to be defined by how much he can destroy. Even when Beerus joked about Broly's destructive power, making him a prime candidate for God of Destruction, Broly had to keep reminding himself that he's more than just his berserker rage. Soon enough, Earth would be in danger again as Frieza was revived and sought revenge. Gohan does much better than in the original story, thanks to him keeping up training more, but his busy schedule has kept him from reaching his full glory, and did decrease in power. Still, he was able to push Frieza into his true form. So much is Gohan's improvement that it takes Golden Frieza to defeat Gohan. But once he transforms, that really is it for the warrior. When news reached Goku and the others about it, he sensed Gohan's power rising. Whis actually stopped Goku and Vegeta before leaving though. He tells them not to only take Broly, but to have him be the one to fight. Both of them are confused, and Vegeta is a little upset. He wants to be the one to defeat Frieza this time, but Whis insists on it. This was more or less a test for Broly. He was a bit nervous about it, but Whis tells him to just remember his training. When the trio arrive, Frieza is delighted to see Goku and Vegeta, but curious about the final Saiyan. He was surprised to see him being so polite, but Broly looks around to see Piccolo extremely hurt, though not dead, thanks to Gohan being stronger. But Gohan himself is even more hurt and on the ground. It's clear to everyone that Broly's rage is about to explode. Everyone is horrified, even Frieza, though he laughs about how Saiyans really are just angry animals. Even so, to their surprise, Broly reaches the boiling point but never goes beyond it, as he's 
slowly goes to Piccolo and Gohan, healing them with his Kai powers. Only slightly though, so they can be in better shape. After all, as explained by Shin in the manga, healing someone with the Kai powers takes a lot. This was the reason why Trunks didn't heal Vegeta all the way into him being able to turn into a Super Saiyan Blue again, because it takes away from his own power. Either way, Gohan notices that Broly wasn't even wearing a collar anymore. They couldn't stop him if he raged. But Goku and Vegeta are surprisingly calm. Broly hates this uncontrollable rage, but Whis's words circle through his mind to remember his training. He remembers Shin, Gohan, and everyone who's helped him on this journey. With a deep breath, his aura erupted and pushed everyone back stronger than ever before. His eyes shifted into a green color. As he bulked up, Broly was not only in full control, he was a Super Saiyan. Frieza froze in fear. It was just like against Goku and Trunks. He wasn't going to let this happen, as he is about to destroy Earth. But the calm Broly burst forward against Frieza, dragging him across the battlefield. In Resurrection F, of course, we got the revelation that Goku and Vegeta had Super Saiyan Blue. So I thought if Vegeta not only got Super Saiyan God, but Super Saiyan Blue by training with Whis, then surely Broly will be able to not only control his power, but also maybe even get beyond there into Super Saiyan. I will say though that Broly is probably strong enough to kill Frieza in just a few shots here, but since he is in control, he also wants to fight. And seeing just how much Frieza has been hyped up by Goku and Vegeta, as well as how much damage he did to Gohan, he isn't killing him right away. But Frieza is unlike any fighter Broly has fought, using various dirty tactics, like his psychic powers, which Broly has never dealt with. Even so, not only is Broly in his Super Saiyan state stronger than Goku and Vegeta in Resurrection F, but Goku and Vegeta themselves are too, thanks to their training with Broly. Ever since the God Ritual, Broly has finally had a little bit of a challenge, meaning he's able to truly grow and adapt like never before. Those in the Kaioshin realm watch through the crystal ball, and Paragus can't help but cheer for his son. He was never really a great father, but he did, at the very least, care about him. As Frieza laid on the floor, begging for his life, Broly contemplated letting him go. Yes, he was the one who destroyed planet Vegeta, but he really has no history with Frieza. He has no idea how truly evil he is, only that he hurt his friends. For that, he's debating whether to end him now or let him go. But at that moment, Sorbet attacked. The blast shot right to Broly. But the main reason Goku was hit in the movie was because, as Whis explained, Goku is too carefree and relaxed during battles. Broly, on the other hand, is much more tense. He lived in an environment that was nothing but danger around all over the place. So Broly isn't actually hit. He's always on guard. So for flavor text, I'll just say that the blast pitters away as it hits Broly. Sorbet is terrified, as Frieza calls him an idiot, only for Broly to turn his way and blast him away with a mouth blast, finishing off the Emperor, while Vegeta flicks Sorbet into the atmosphere. The two other Saiyans are kind of upset that they didn't get to fight, but still proud at Broly for how far he's come. Since they have all this pent up energy, they instead ask to battle with him, in order to show off their Super Saiyan Blue, which is cut short when Bulma and the others yell at them that they're causing too much damage to Earth. So instead, they take it to Beer his planet, where the God of Destruction himself contemplates. They're growing faster than he ever expected, so perhaps it'll be time for a rematch sooner rather than later. This short adventure was over. The old Kai couldn't believe how much Broly had progressed. That boy had really surprised him since the first time they met, so he offered him another chance to get his potential unlocked. Now that he has full control of himself, things could go one of two ways here. Either Broly accepts, as he has finally proven himself, or he doesn't, as he is happy with the progress he has made with his own effort to get stronger and get control. Either way, Broly is much more powerful and everyone else is too. If he gets ultimate, he just runs through the rest of the series easier than he would have. As you'll see, he's still not gonna have a hard time. So for the sake of this, I'm going to say that he doesn't get it unlocked, as he wants to continue growing on his own. But that doesn't mean he never will. As we see in the superhero manga, Broly has enjoyed training with Goku and Vegeta, and I think it's more interesting and in character to want to keep growing rather than skipping ahead. Eventually, Shampa, the Universe 6 God of Destruction, invites Beerus and Universe 7 into a tournament for the sake of Earth. With Broly now in full control of his power, Goku and Vegeta progress much faster too, as fighting each other seem to be what progress Goku and Vegeta the most while training with Whis. Add the much stronger Broly into the mix, and surely all three Saiyans skyrocket. We can gloss over much of the Universe 6 arc because of this, I think. The Universe 7 team is Goku, Vegeta, Broly, Piccolo, and Monaka. Even if Broly is a goal for Goku and Vegeta to reach, Broly himself needs someone he wants to surpass. At least that's Beerus' mindset, which is why he gets Monaka. The fights go on as normal overall. For Broly, it's kinda cool seeing how Saiyans from Universe 6 are. They seem much more peaceful, and 
Sometimes, though Broly himself enjoys fighting, he isn't nearly as aggressive, at least not on purpose, as Goku and Vegeta are about it. If only Vegeta had gone second against Hit, I think he would have won. But seeing how this is his first time experiencing time skip, he ends up being knocked out, while Goku fares real well against them to the point of nearly winning as he adapts to the time skip. That leaves Broly as the final combatant. He had been observing the battles and knows a bit better what he's dealing with. Even so, the time skip is something he needs to adapt to. Jumping into Ikari, Hit can tell just how much of a beast Broly is in this form, but just like Goku and Broly himself in his movie, he learns as he fights. This surprises everyone, as although this is a much more back and forth battle than Broly has ever been in, he uses what he's learned to his advantage. It's a lucky thing he was the last one to fight, as Hit knows nothing about him. Broly uses the Kai Kai to disappear as soon as he realizes that Hit is using the time skip, something which the Universe 6 Kaioshin are perplexed by. Why did this guy know a technique reserved for the gods? By the time Hit realizes what's going on, Broly reappeared behind Hit, snapped into Super Saiyan, and knocked him out of the ring. This time, it wasn't raw strength that helped him, but his training with his old friends. Hit is now even more motivated to improve. Zeno appears just like in the original, with Goku making quick friends and telling him that he should make a multiverse tournament. They wish for a new planet Earth for Universe 6. But far away, on a different universe, a Kaioshin in training named Zamazu watched the battles unfold on GodTube. Zamazu cannot believe a rageful mortal like Broly not only wore the Kai regalia, but used their techniques. It was disgraceful, and the last nail in the coffin for him to decide on his Zero Mortals plan. The future Trunks arc begins, and the heroes are informed that Trunks has arrived in the present once more. Broly isn't too interested in what's going on. He doesn't know why they're all freaked out about Trunks, since he already knows Vegeta's kid. When Trunks wakes up and sees Broly, he instantly attacks. But unlike with Goku, where he stopped after realizing he was in the past, he continues to attack. Not only does this guy look like the man that's been attacking the future, he also wore the Kai uniform. Vegeta and Goku had to force Trunks away from him, as Broly wasn't really fighting back. Things settle, and Trunks explains what happened, and Broly is extremely shaken up. Had he lost control in the future? Was this all his fault? While Goku and Vegeta take care of Trunks, a portal opens up above, revealing not Goku Black, but Broly Black. He has chosen to take this body instead because it was not only stronger, but he represented what he hated the most, mortals parading around as gods. Broly is perplexed to see himself in such a manner as his power begins to rise more and more, but Goku, being Goku, rushes in to fight first. Broly continues to promise himself not to lose control and become jaded, hating what he could possibly become. But it's that exact same fear that makes him explode into Berserk for the first time in a long time, and actually loses control, ramming through Goku and attacking Black. But Little Black work. is pulled away and back into the future before Broly can kill him, not before he destroys the time machine. Beerus and Whis are both annoyed at all of this already, so Whis appears behind Broly and knocks him out. He was disappointed to see him lose control so easily but he understood that it was fear of losing control itself that triggered him, a deeper fear which they need to work on together. Just like in the original, Goku, Whis, and Beerus head to Universe 10 to check on Zamazu. Goku also eventually gets the Zeno button, while Vegeta trains Trunks for a bit. Broly, on the other hand, goes off to see Gohan and tells him about what happened. He is worried about losing control again and hurting everyone who's helped him along the way. Gohan tries to tell him that he's grown so much and that whoever this man was couldn't have possibly actually been him. While the time machine is beginning to prepare. Not only does Trunks get time to train with Vegeta, but he also gets to know Broly, though reluctant at first. But they bond over the fact that they have both been Kai apprentices, and Broly even reveals to him that he has the ability to heal, something Trunks didn't know until Shin tells him in the manga. Broly even gets a chance to train with Trunks' sword, as they both recall what it was like to handle the Z-sword. Broly even takes Trunks to the Kaioshin realm, where he has a nice reunion with Shin and Kibito, and apologizes to the old Kai for killing him in the future time timeline, when the sword was sped on by Dabora. The Elder Kai is quite offended, and because he heavily disagrees with all the time travel stuff, he refuses to unlock Trunks' potential. But Broly says that he owed him one. Why not use what was supposed to be Broly's on him? When that doesn't work, Broly tells the old Kai that he'll bring him a peachy peachy gal, something he has seen Goku do before, though he doesn't really know what it means. The old Kai rolls his eyes. Because the ritual takes 20 hours plus 5 others for the power-up to appear, the team actually departs to the future a little later 
better than in the original. Goku isn't sure about bringing Broly, after Black made him lose control like that, but Trunks surprisingly argued in his favor. Not only had he proven to be a good guy, but the fear Black had in those eyes when Broly attacked was perfect, and having someone else that can heal could only help. In the future, the team quickly finds Broly Black. Trunks wants to battle him first and foremost, cocky with his ultimate state. Even with this power-up, Trunks is knocked to the side as Vegeta rushes in to help, but he's blasted at by none other than Zamazu. It looks like Beerus' suspicions were right. Zamazu was behind this. Broly can't believe it. He thinks that Kaioshin represents something good in the universe, as Shin himself had been nothing but a great friend to him. A Kai using powers for evil was disgusting, and he swore to stop him. Broly bursts into Super Saiyan, remaining in control, though his anger is apparent. Broly goes on to attack Zamazu, but Black burst through his counterpart to face Broly. Just like how having Goku's body informed Zamazu's enjoyment for a good battle, Broly's body would certainly make Black more aggressive, even against his own ally, though mentally he is much more in control. Black is even able to use a form like Ikari, which he copied from watching Broly rage out. You may know everything I'm going to do, but I know everything you're going to do. Strange isn't it? Broly and Goku's combined might proved to be too much for the evil Saiyan, who's finally pushed into Super Saiyan Rose. My power is rising. It's overflowing. I'm going to bathe in your blood. The fights continue, and it's obvious that Zamazu is immortal. Neither Vegeta nor Trunks are making any progress in killing him, realizing that if they do kill Black, they're not going to be able to get rid of Zamazu. Trash Super Saiyan Broly vs. Rose Trash. Broly Black get is intense, and slowly it seems like Black really is surpassing Broly. They can't stay there forever, especially since they can't kill Zamazu. They need to reconvene. Vegeta, Trunks, and Goku all push in together, getting Black away from Broly with a giant blast. They're finally able to to escape, though Broly hates doing so. Trunks is left behind, bursting open his ultimate aura, powering up even further, purple electricity surrounding him, hinting at a power beyond. He's just glad the other survived and hopes that they return soon. Both Goku and Broly have an idea on how to defeat Zamazu. Goku goes to see Roshi, while Broly goes to see the old Kai. Fighting with the sea sword reminded Broly that the old Kai was strapped in there by Beerus. So after getting told the story, Broly goes off to see the God of Destruction, asking him about that technique to seal a god. Beerus says that he'd better not plan on using it on him, and though he's a little apprehensive at first, especially when it has to do with time travel, Broly promised him some good food. He explains the technique to Broly. No seal required, just a sword. At his request, Whis makes one appear out of thin air, made out of Hachin. Meanwhile, Goku learns the Mafuba, and then goes to see Beerus and watches Zamazu get killed. Shin and Gowazu will go to the future with them now. They return to the future and quickly find Trunks, Mai, and the villains. And so, the fight begins again. Rose Black versus Broly, and Vegeta versus Zamazu, as Goku tries to seal away Zamazu. Just like in the original story, with no seal, it's not gonna work, so they begin to lose hope, but Broly guarantees them that he has an idea. But as he's going to approach them about it, Black stabs him into a wall using his keyblade, then takes the sword from Broly's bag and stabs it into him too. Black begins to tell Broly about how he killed Paragus, even Goku, Gohan, and the others. He took them by surprise, but it was clear that they saw what they always feared, Broly's rage. This only forces Broly to explode in power. That's when Trunks bursts forward, kicking Black away from Broly. Broly. He returns to pull the sword out and heal him, but when he looks up, Broly's pupils are gone. Black had forced Broly into a berserk beyond Super Saiyan. His full power Super Saiyan form. Goku and Vegeta tell Trunks to try and calm him down, while they continue to fight Zamazu and Black. But it's no use, nothing is working. And this was Zamazu's and Black's plan all along, using Broly as basically a bomb against his own friends. Now they have to deal with him and two evildoers. But Broly wasn't just attacking his friends, he was attacking everyone, including Zamazu Black and the civilians. Goku and Vegeta use this to their advantage, making Broly follow them so he would attack Black. Meanwhile, Goku and Vegeta got to heal a little bit, but they couldn't keep him in the city. Everyone would die. It got to the point where Black and Zamazu were forced to take their Potara off and merge into a single being. Seeing no other option, Gowasa suggests the Potara, and this is actually Goku and Vegeta's first time hearing it, since they didn't fuse in the Busak. Thankfully, it's not permanent, and they agree after much deliberation. The Ultimate Warrior is 
born in the form of Vegito Blue. But with Broly going insane all over the place, they know they'd need to teleport him somewhere else. But they can't leave Zamazu there either. As Broly continues to beat on Zamazu, Vegito appears behind them both and teleports them to the Arctic. Vegito vs Broly is an intense battle. The fusion has a lot to deal with, since he has to make sure to keep Zamazu in the fight as well. They can't just let him escape back to the city. But with Broly attacking them both, there's times where both fusions have to fight together against Broly. Shin is worried about his friend. He's never seen him like this. Even when he's exploded in power before, they could always bring him back. This time, it seems different. As Broly fired an Omega Blast, Vegito responded with a final Kamehameha, while Zamasu struck with a lightning absolution. The force of the battle was such that it created cracks through the universe, giving us a glimpse in between realities itself. Zamasu began to break down. He couldn't understand mere mortals achieving power so much higher than himself. Even as a Kai, he'd never seen something like this. As they exit the cracks of reality, Gowazu, Shin, and Vegito all stop Broly for a split second, using the God Bind and the Kai ability to mobilize someone. Trunks and the other continue to tell him to calm down. Broly bursts forward against Vegito and Trunks, pushing Vegito out of the way and going towards the half Saiyan. Trunks had nowhere to run and readied his sword, saying over and over that he didn't want to hurt Broly. Upon seeing this, Shin ignored Gowazu's warnings and blitzed forward right in front of Trunks, arms spread wide open. This actually stops Broly, telling him to remember everything they have fought for. Earth, Shin, Gohan, Goku, Vegeta, Beerus, Whis, Trunks, and his father, Paragus. They're all rooting for him and his incredible improvement. He can't throw it all away now. He can't become a weapon for Zamazu. They have to prove Zamazu and show him that he isn't just a weapon to be used. He's not a tool for somebody's revenge. Shin hated Broly being used and apologized, admitting that even himself had used them once to defeat Bobbity. But now he had his life in his hands. What did he want to do? He didn't really want to hurt Trunks nor anyone else, did he? There was a pause before Broly swatted them both to the side, roaring in rage and exploding even further as he smashed through them. Zamazu laughed. Now that the maniac was focused on Vegito, Zamazu could just watch as Broly defeated his own friends. But while the Kai applauded the spectacle, Vegito, Trunks, and Shin realized that his punches weren't hurting them anymore. Zamazu proclaims that these mortals could never match up to him, cheering Broly on to kill Vegito. But as he did that, Broly smirked to Shin, spinning on his heel and firing a giant mouth blast as Zamazu, completely decimating half of his body. Broly continued to huff and puff. His rage was still getting the better of him, but slowly it seemed like he was getting it under control again. Sorry, I lost my head there for a second. As if I'd ever be your tool, I'm not going to let this rage define me. In the manga, Broly's training with Whis for less than a year has shown improvement. So after so many years of training with him, even if he does lose control a little bit, being reminded of what he has accomplished so far could really pull him back. It was just the anger caused by Zamazu that forced him to explode. Vegito and Broly stand side by side and rush at Zamazu as the evil fusion begins to change, deforming collapsing upon itself. He calls down a lightning blast that finally pulls them away, with Goku and Vegeta defusing. They're all hurt, but Broly more so after fighting the fusions. Not only that, but part of the sword remained in him this whole time. Trunks begins to heal Broly just a little bit to keep him conscious. Broly apologized to Trunks, but there was no time for that. He can't even access Super Saiyan right now, but he has a plan. As he looks at Trunks' sword, while Vegeta and Goku try to keep Zamazu away, Trunks joins in the fight. Even while hurt, Broly can't stand to watch his friends battle this alone, and joins in as well. But a stray blast forces Trunks to drop the sword. It's a hard-fought battle, and Zamazu just won't die. In his hubris and rage, Zamazu doesn't realize what they're planning, until he's suddenly stopped. It's only for a split second, as Shin and Gowazo unite forces to stop Zamazu in place. He expands his aura, blasting them both away. But it's too late. That was all the time they needed, as Goku who once again tries to use the Mafuba. Zamasu laughs. It didn't work the first time, it's not going to work now. But the Mafuba is not the plan. Trunks joins in alongside Goku, but as they realize that none of the three of them have the sword, it comes flying in, thrown by Vegeta. At the same time, Broly uses the move Beerus taught him, and together with the others, they drag Zamasu, trapping him within Trunks' sword, effectively creating a brand new Sea Sword. Zamasu screams echoed, but it seemed that finally the threat was done. According to Beerus, not even Hakai can destroy an immortal. It's a good thing Broly was so familiar with the Sea Sword and the old Kai to think about this plan. Shin was proud of everyone, though he doesn't want the Sea Sword in his planet. So either Gowazo takes it, or it would look fantastic in Beerus' bedroom. 
with the future say of the Z Fighters' return to the present, saying their goodbyes, as Whis makes Trunks promise to never time travel again. He's in a lot of trouble. The Z Fighters take this as a little bit more of a time to rest, but they know that the Tournament of Power is coming up. Since there's not a second Zeno, there's no exhibition match, since the one we have already knows what a tournament is. Because of this, the Z Fighters in general get to train more. Gohan and Broly in particular train together, since Gohan finally has time to settle down a little bit and hang out with his friend. His power is of course explosive because of this. The team is composed of Goku, Gohan, Vegeta, Broly, Tien, Krillin, Piccolo, 17, 18, and Master Roshi. So not too dissimilar from the original, but they never end up getting Frieza. Funny enough, despite the Tournament of Power being one of the more epic arcs in Dragon Ball Super, in this one, because of how strong everyone is, it's actually a lot easier for them. Though there is some matches I'd like to highlight. For example, Broly vs. Kale. After the fights in the future, Broly continued to hone his power, and got to understand it more and more. So when he sees Kale, a girl who reflects the kind of power he has, he's inclined to help her, especially when she loses control when being jealous that Goku is fighting against Khalifla. It's very similar to the power Broly felt against Zamazu. So instead of Kale going around and rampaging, Broly and her clash in the middle. The impact is enough to send a lot of enemies flying off the edge of the stage. Broly calms her down by telling her that she doesn't need to be defined by this strange power she has, and that if she learns to use it properly, it will only serve her to protect those she loves, including Kaulifla, who also comes and helps her calm down. Broly tells her that he wants to help her control that power, inspired by how Vegeta acted against Kaba. She agrees, and Kaulifla is excited too. They want to see what this old guy is made of. Broly ends up bursting through most of the enemies he encounters, with his hardest fight being against Kefla, as when he finds out that half the Potara, he encourages them to use it. He's fought two Potara fusions in the past, and this is one of the few times he really gets to test himself, though in the end they don't stand a chance. Towards the end of the tournament, most of Universe 7 remains, and Goku still unlocks Ultra Instinct Omen, as he told Broly to leave Jiren to him. Since Goku is fairly determined to be the one to fight Jiren, Broly ends up protecting the others from getting knocked out of the ring. But in the end, it's Gohan, Goku, Vegeta, Broly, and 17 who remain. Since the Z Fighters are overall stronger, Jiren has to break through his limits earlier on, but years of training at Beerus' planet has really put them all above. In the end, Gohan and Broly's Ki Blasts are enough to push Jiren to the edge of the arena, with such overwhelming force that Jiren has to pour everything he has back into it, but it's too late, because Goku and Vegeta are able to drag him out of the arena and knock him off the ring. Jiren is defeated, with Gohan wishing for the universes to be restored. Amongst the gods of destruction and the fighters from the various teams, there's whispers that perhaps more of Universe 7 has been able to surpass gods. This makes Shin approach Broly after the tournament. He didn't need to keep wearing that. Vegeta had the Saiyan Prince thing going on, and Goku was the Earthling fighter. What did Broly have? Just some rags? No, he was taken in by the Kaioshin, and he was thankful for that. But for now, he wants to spend time with his family. But before he makes it towards Paragus, Goku and Vegeta step in the way, telling him that they want a rematch. It's been so long since they've had a proper fight. Vegito versus Broly was one of the only times they got to fight him. But of course, that wasn't a proper fight, as Zamasu was there the entire time. But now they think they have an idea on how to challenge him again. This actually excites Broly, who takes his father by the hand and tells him to come watch him fight. Deep in the wasteland, Goku and Vegeta stand next to each other. Vegeta says that he would never want to do something like this, but in order to have a proper fight against Broly, when they really get to go all out, this is the only time he's willing to. As Goku and Vegeta fuse, giving birth to Gogeta, staring down at Broly, this is unparalleled power. But that wasn't going to stop him, as he burst into his full power Super Saiyan state. Paragus was terrified for a moment, reaching out into his pocket ready to press a button, but he realized that he hadn't had the remote in many years. And above that, Broly was in complete control. His pupils were intact, and he laughed as he got ready to fight against Gogeta. His son had come a long, long way. Finally, he could just enjoy a battle and not have to fight for survival nor against himself. These were the fruits of Broly's journey. And that's where the Dragon Ball Super anime section of the story ends, but I am going to cover a little bit of the manga arcs. So if you don't want to get spoiled, stop right here, that was the end of the story. But if you read the Dragon Ball Super manga and know a little bit more about the story, then let's keep going, just a little bit longer. Miras, the Galactic Patrol agent, goes to Earth in search for Boo, but obviously Boo is not around, he's been defeated for many many years. So instead he goes to the person who defeated Boo, finding out that it's Gohan. Gohan thinks this 
this is weird and calls on Broly, Goku, and Vegeta for help. Mirrors is happy to see how strong they are, and he takes them to the Galactic Patrol HQ. It's obvious to Gohan that Mirrors is unlike any other Galactic Patrolman, especially when they defeat the Makareni gang. They end up locating Moro on the way to Namek. Unlike Goku's instant transmission, the Kai Kai Broly learned doesn't require him to lock onto any key signature, so Broly teleports everyone to new Namek with ease, before Moro even arrives. None of them have any idea why Moro is heading to Namek, but Gohan knows the Dragon Balls are certainly in danger. Thus, he asks Broly to teleport them to a different place, the Kaioshin realm, while the others try to hide the Namekians. By the time he's about to leave with the last few, Moro arrives. Gohan tells Broly to just leave the last couple here. Since they're separated, they might as well be useless. Goku and Vegeta want to face Moro first, working their way up from Super Saiyan to Super Saiyan Blue. But something strange is going on. Not only did Goku and Vegeta start to regress in forms, Moro's beard was gone and he looked much younger, even faster than in the manga. Goku and Vegeta are eventually knocked away, and Broly tries to power up into Super Saiyan, but he realizes that he can't. Moro reveals that Broly was the worst person that could have faced him, as he is nothing more than a giant glowing beacon of ki, which he has been sapping away energy from. They should have killed him when they had the chance. Now all he needs is to be able to regain his magic through the use of the Dragon Balls. Gohan continues the battle, even if just to buy more time for Namek, but with all the power Moro absorbed, he stands no chance. However, Gohan gets to mock Moro, saying that the Dragon Balls are no longer a Namek. He can't even make his wish. Moro is livid and begins attacking Gohan savagely. Broly musters up the anger to push Moro away. If their energy keeps getting eaten, they're just going to be a danger to the universe. So Broly and Goku teleport the other two to the Kaioshin realm, where Kibito will be able to heal them a little bit. They discuss what to do as they watch through the crystal ball, seeing that Moro is absorbing the energy from Namek from beyond the atmosphere. They can't reach him there, but Namek will die if they don't do anything. Broly has a better idea, a desolate world where no civilians will get hurt. Planet Vampa. There's little life there as is, and if they can finish him off quickly, they'll save the animals too. Shin is surprised to see Broly suggest a place that used to be his home for so long. Moro's ability doesn't just steal energy from the planet, but everything in it. So while they're fighting, they're gonna get their powers stolen unless they blitz him and defeat him right away. Goku doesn't really like the idea of doing that, but since Moro has stolen their power anyways, it's not like any of them can just do that. But the old Kai perks up, asking them why they don't try the Potara again. They used it to fight against Broly. Why not use it to defeat Moro? If they're able to disorient Moro by taking him to Vampa, and use their strongest weapon before he can start absorbing energy properly, then he'll be done for. Vegeta scoffs, saying that he doesn't want to fuse ever again with Kakarot. Goku rolls his eyes, but looks at the other two. It's a shame he won't get to fight Moro for much longer, but he's a threat they can't afford to let go. These are desperate times which call for desperate measures. Without Majin Buu, they really have no other option. And since Gohan and Broly are a little bit more efficient than Goku and Vegeta, who usually just want to have a good fight, they would also agree that taking care of this is more important. But since none of the Saiyans can breathe in the atmosphere, they need to get help from Mirus. Shin teleports with the others to Mirus' spaceship, where they explain the plan to him, and he agrees. Goku is to distract Moro while wearing the Galactic Patrol spacesuit, with Goku attempting to tap into Ultra Instinct once more to avoid Moro's attacks, with little success. Even so, Mirus is impressed, and wants to take him to the Galactic Patrol time chamber when they can. Goku takes the chance to tackle Moro and teleport him into Vampa. As soon as Moro reappears on Vampa, he's confused, ready to attack Goku again, but the Saiyan smirks at Broly, who nods back at him and places something in his ear. As Moro tries to punch him, Goku's body goes slamming into Broly, exploding in a bright light and giving birth to a new fusion, Karoli. Moro salivates at the amount of power in display, but before he can do anything, Gohan and Vegeta appear from either end, using the solar flare to blind Moro and disorient him, with Mira trapping Moro within his containment net. The next thing he feels is someone punching him in the stomach with such force that it takes his breath away. The combo continues until the fusion places his hands in front of him, creating an Omega Kamehameha. But this is just an illusion. Karoli knows that Moro can't help himself to this amount of energy. He has to absorb it. So as soon as he lets go, and Moro begins devouring the energy, he realizes that it's actually quite a small amount compared to what he thought it was. That's because behind him, the real fusion had appeared. Fist pulled back, full of energy, as the sound of Anuzaru and the imagery of it was displayed bursting through Moro and disintegrating him in one single Ozaru fist. The attack was so fast that Moro had barely any time to absorb the power from the planet. The roar continued as the fusion put his fist up to the sky and undid itself. The power was such that the fusion didn't last very long. 
Moro has been defeated, and the energy that he absorbed is expelled outwards, raining down on planet Vampa and actually giving it more life as plants begin to bloom. Thanks to Gohan's ingenuity, Moro also didn't get his wish to have the rest of the Galactic Patrol prisoners escape. So overall, it's still an easier time for everyone. They're all glad that the universe is safe, with Miras offering Goku a chance to train with him. But the ground begins to tremble. A congregation of giant creatures surround the group, attracted by the commotion they caused. Vegeta is ready to blow them away, but Gohan tells him to stop. Broly looks at one of the creatures in the center curiously. The monster looks extremely angry as Broly holds onto his kilt. Slowly, he approaches, as it growls and even tries to bite him. But Broly is too fast, and he appears behind the creature. He whispers something, a name, as he runs his hand down his missing ear. Broly was using the Kai powers to restore his old friend, Ba's ear, apologizing for what his father did, and even commenting on how he is a different man. Slowly, the creature calms down, and the two look at each other in the eyes, promising to come visit. Ba nods respectfully at Broly, as him and the other creatures leave. Broly apologizes to the others for doing that, but that was just something he needed to do. As Miras looks up to the sky, mortals really are something interesting. Finally, the Granola arc actually doesn't happen. Because they had Broly during the Tournament of Power, Frieza never got revived. Alex just knows that Frieza is dead for good. Granola doesn't have anybody to really shoot at for his quest for revenge. So, nothing to fight the Dragon Balls for in order to get stronger. The extreme need that the heaters have in the manga to stop Granola just isn't there. And instead, they have free reign to take over what's left of the Frieza Force. Too many factors rely on Frieza, so I don't think that the arc would manifest. Well, then a few years pass and Gohan even had his own adventure on Earth. Cell Max may be stronger, but so is Gohan and the other Z fighters. Goten and Trunks even look up to Broly, and their caves for their great Saiyaman outfits have the texture and color of Ba's ear. They of course have Super Saiyan too, but their fusions are way beyond that at this point. And so, in the end, with no Majin Buu to be revived, Goku, Vegeta, and Broly focus on training the fighters from Universe 6. They are on their monthly visit to Planet Sadala. Vegeta wears his Earthling clothing, Goku his blue gi, and Broly the same old Kaioshin garb. Kale continues to struggle to be at her max without losing it, but this was it. She was going to reach her master too. The Dragon Team and the new generation look up to the sky as they see a shooting star whiz by. Kami had once told Goku during training that a shooting star means a powerful warrior had moved on to a stronger realm, a peaceful one. As a bird chirped on the plane, the battle began. And that's my interpretation and theory of the story for What If Broly Was Found by the Kaioshin. Thank you for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed. This video has taken forever to do, but it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed playing with a lot of new effects and writing in a little bit of a different way. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know we as a Dragon Ball community are having a hard time with everything that's going on with uh, Toriyama's passing in the past week, but I hope you guys are sticking together. I hope that we're all looking forward and remembering what brought us to the series, what brought us to Toriyama's work in general, and that we really remember the good times we've had with them, the friends we've made, and the time we had with Akira Toriyama's work. He will be missed. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.